Holiday, we could be so you. <laughs> I don't even know what song that is that you're singing. Oh, I just made up the lyrics there. Yeah. I think you did, actually. <laughs> and my coom came up, so I got oh, that. So I've had, I've had a really l- lucky month where the coom's coming up and stuff like that. So absolutely brilliant. So we'll wait. Shh, shh, Dave, don't say that out too loud. Your wife will hear. <laughs> no, she will sit next to me. So. <laughs> The ball wasn't cleared properly. <coughs> <coughs> Just like my throat, the ball wasn't cleared properly. <laughs> I'm waiting to go to bed, Dave. I'm not even going <laughs> to say night night to the wife. <laughs> the the nine the arrow was na- the arrow was nine. <laughs> <laughs> and the stadium erupts in red, white, and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the I Ready podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek and with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? I'm very well Derek, It's it's been a long time, we've got loads of games to cover haven't we because uh, you know we've not done the podcast so, so long because uh, one of us has been away on holiday. I just thought I would get that in there before you uh, you quipped up and had a wee dig at me for being away again. I mean, who would ever do that, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dave's been away on holiday for a few weeks. I've had some COVID issues and sickness issues again. It reared his ugly head, but I'm back. I'm knackered, but I'm still here. So all good in the hood. Yes, definitely. So, yes, we've got a good few games to cover. We're only going to briefly cover them, mainly because you could telegraph pretty much every game how it went, Davey. Just about Derek summed up, I think, eventually by the game last night. That's the kind of way that it has been going. But we will get to that game when uh, when the time is right. Yes. So we'll go down the tunnel and onto the pitch. <laughs> So the first game we've got to cover was on Saturday the 18th of March. It was away to Motherwell where we won 4-2. Another shit show of a game really, wasn't it, Dave? It was. Thankfully, though, we had our shooting boots on Derek and, you know, got the goals when it counted. Yes. So we lined up with two changes from the Wraith Rovers game. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Davis, Ridvan, Lundstrom, Jack, Cantwell, Sakala, Ken and Cholak. On the subs bench were McLaughlin, Hadji, Suter, Kamara, Morellis, Wright, Arfield, Devine and Tillman. So interesting, Ridvan getting a start. Exactly. I mean, we've paid a lot of money for, for him, Derek. You know, why not get him in? We know what Borna Barisic can do, so why not get the guy in? He's supposed to be the future here. He's, you know, the, the player that we've all been looking for. So, hi, if, if we get an opportunity, get him into the team. Yes, but it lasted only three minutes after we went one goal down because Motherwell scored. It was a long ball from the middle to the right wing, controlled a simple cross across the middle and a tap in from close range. It did look slightly offside. It went to VAR and the goal stood. Just typical defending from Rangers. Yeah, very sort of lackadaisical, Derek. I'm going to be using that word a lot today, but yep, it wasn't the best, was it? However, we did pull a goal back on the 23rd minute and it was Tavernier scoring. It was a free kick on the edge of the box, on the left, up and over the wall, into the bottom corner, past the keeper. It was a great executed free kick. Few and far between, but we've seen from Tavernier lately. I know it was. It was an excellent goal, Derek, as you said. He managed to get height on it just enough to go over the wall and then it just dipped at the last moment, fantastic goal for him and, you know, the stuff that we know that he can do, but just like you said there, it just, uh, it's been very fleeting this season, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, the the rest of the half kind of played out, we were in control from what I can remember, but again never working their keeper, which has always been a feature of this team for the last 18 months. Yep, 100%. Yep, into the second half, and it was fortunately us that went up getting a quick goal in the second half with Sakala scoring on the 47th minute to make it 2-1. I've not actually written any notes because I missed it because I was off doing stuff around the house while it was half time and I missed the start of the game. So, Dave, I don't know if you can remember it. Yeah, it was. It was just like what you said, Derek. It was very, very quick off the mark, which is exactly what we are looking for. Sakala was uh, pounced 
scored and it got us, you know, back in, into the game exactly what we were looking for because, I, you know, it's really... I was try- actually trying to think the last time that we came out all guns blazing at the start of a second half to kill a team off. And again, it's something that we should be doing, but we just don't do often enough. No, definitely not. 49th minute was a lovely through ball to Cholak in the box on the right. The angle was narrowing and he shoots it miles wide. And the most overriding thing of that move is if he had just squared it to Sakawa, it was an yeah. absolute tap-in. Yeah. And it wasn't so much that, it was the high-pitched squealing from Sakawa because he never <laughs> passed him. It was <laughs> shocking from Cholak, but it was funny all the same with Sakala and his high-pitched voice. Yep. Yeah. We ruined that chance though because in the 59th minute, typical once again, Motherwell drew level up to make it two each. It was a corner from the right into the middle, Tavernier heads it up in the air, off a couple of arms, falls to the ground, indecision how to stab it away and Beavis Mugabe, who had not long came on, manages yeah. to power his way through and stab it into the net from two yards. Just a calamity of errors once again. Tavernier not properly cleared it from the first time. The fact that it was a handball, I think it maybe actually even hit off one of our players' hands first never mind off the Motherwell arm as well so I don't know what the referee and VAR were doing there but just the absolute calamity in defence it was almost as if they were too scared to put a foot in It's this whole thing Derek of you know just clear the ball just get the ball away just get clear it for danger it doesn't matter how pretty it looks or how ugly it looks just get the ball out of danger and again it was just the fact that there was so many bodies in there and just not one person could just either get ahead to it to start off with or just, you know, volley it away up the field. Really, really scrappy. And, you know, as we're going to get into in the next few games, unfortunately, it wasn't the first time that we failed to clear our lines, Derek. I mean, there was plenty more examples to come, but something that, and we've said it before, the 55 season, we had an, a, a record-breaking defence because they just done the basics. Yep. They didn't do anything fancy. they just done the basics and cleared the lines. Nobody thought they were Franco Baresi. Now we're all thinking we're, we're brilliant again, at playing out from the back. But these players haven't got the skill to do that. It's, it's not good enough in the slightest. And no. we lose goals like that. Yep. However, we only had to wait a few minutes because in the 62nd minute, Todd Cantwell made it 3-2. It was down the left-hand side, Sakala with a cross, Cholak with a shot, saved, it breaks to Tavernier who shot, it was saved again, breaks to Cantwell who shoots and scores. There was a lengthy VAR check but the goal stood. I thought it was offside but I think with it was on the same side as the first goal that Motherwell scored in the third minute and I think there was a trick of the, the there was an optical illusion because from the VAR lines it was on but from the camera angle that we were seeing it looked certainly off so a bit strange that one Dave wasn't it yeah it was but great for Cantwell uh, to to score as well Derek you can see that he's coming more and more into the game at that stage not the classiest of goals from him more of a sort of poacher's instinct which isn't his position but regardless the ball ended up in the back of the net and we were back in front again and that's all that mattered at that stage Yes, and of course, what was the goal that only was talked about by the the usual suspects about being offside? Of course, that one, that not, the, not not the the Motherwell no. first goal. No. no substitutions on the sixty fifth minute: Cholak and Sakala off, Morelis and Tillman on, and then more or less instantly, Tillman made it four two on the sixty ninth minute. Kent playing a lovely ball through to Morelis on the left side, gets to the touchline, cuts it back to Tillman on the edge of the box on the right side, who controls it and hits a stunning shot into the top right bin. Two substitutions linking up perfectly yeah. straight away, getting the goal. Fantastic goal! He'd been out for for a few games. We weren't sure if he was a hundred percent fit. That was him coming back, still sort of showing everybody what he could do. And, you know, it was absolutely fantastic. The, the accuracy and the control was just superb. And again, that's, the, you know, the type of stuff that this guy can do when he's on his game. So, not great goal. Yes. 71st minute, Yilmaz off and Arfield on. And on the 76th minute, maybe a bit of controversy, it was a red card for the the Motherwell player with a second yellow. It was a flailing arm into the face of Cantwell. I didn't think there was much in it, to be honest. It's not as if he went for him. It was just a bit of an accident, I felt. However, the referee deemed it a second yellow. A bit harsh, but the usual suspects branded Cantwell a cheat. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. It did catch him in the face. There is no question about that. I just felt it wasn't meant. It was a bit of an accident, and that's why it was a bit harsh. Not because yeah. Cantwell was cheating. Absolute yeah. nonsense. No, no. But Derek, it's to be expected from uh, 
the certain p- people that write this nonsense constantly and tweet these things that say uh, we're never going to win with them, so sod them. Yeah. So that's really how the game ended up. But, I mean, how many more times are we going to have to go through this giving away silly goals? And that's going to be a feature over the next few games. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, well, you, you, we're going to get used to it by the end of this podcast because it's all we're going to talk about. Yeah, exactly. However, the next game was the, the there was an international break and the next actual game was on the 26th of March where it was the weekend of legends with the Rangers 11 legends and the World 11 legends. And it turned out that the World 11 won 4-3. Dave, I never watched the game, I don't know about you, but um, certainly a, a good time had by all, apparently. Yeah, no, I only saw what I was reading on Twitter, Derek, I was away at that stage, so never got a chance to see it or, or any of the highlights, but looks like it was a very good turnout and, you know, some fantastic names that they had in there playing and certainly a lot of goals for everyone to see. Yes. So, the next actual game that we had was on Saturday, the 1st of April. It was a 2-0 win at home against Dundee United in the Premiership. A potential banana skin because Dundee United were starting to come onto a bit of a game and they had, you know, certainly all to play for being at the bottom of the table. Yep, no, definitely. And as you say, it's games like that when you're playing against teams that are at the foot of the table that you know that they are doing everything they can for survival. So, Exactly like what you said, Derek, it had the potential to be a, a bit of a disaster, but thankfully, as you're about to get into, uh, we didn't have to worry about that. Yes. So we lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Davis, Barisic, Lundstrom, Jack, Cantwell, Tillman, Kent and Morellas. On the subs bench, we have McLaughlin, Ridvan, Cholak, Suter, Matondo, Kamara, Wright, Sakala and Arfield. And of note, Alan McGregor making his 500th appearance for the club, only the 16th player to do so, I believe, incredible. and the first since McCoyst. Absolutely incredible day. I mean, he has been a, a fantastic servant to us, we do know that, and you know, who knows what amount of caps that he would be on for, or appearances that he would be on for Rangers if everything hadn't have happened, that, that did They're probably have broken all records, but a fantastic achievement. Yes, and uh, it was a, I think it was John Gregg presented him with, I think it was a crystal decanter uh, as well, just before the game, which was a, a nice touch uh, yeah. by the club. Yes, but uh, really it was all us in the first half, bar two chances for Dundee United. They were sitting back, allowing us to come at them, but again, we were playing at pedestrian pace. We had a chance on the third minute, it was a volley from Jack just outside the box, but it went wide. They had a chance on the ninth minute, uh, after a, and it was a quick break, after us losing the ball cheap in midfield, Davis done well to snuff it out after a deflection on the 24th minute, Cantwell with a poked shot, saved by the keeper, it was spilled, Tillman dives over the keeper there was a VAR check, there was a no touch from the keeper, I don't know if Tillman got clipped by the defender or not, but it wasn't a foul anyway, so correct decision not to give a penalty, yeah. you know, Tillman was getting called a cheat as well, I don't think he was cheating I just think he was just trying to dive out of the way of the keeper so that he, he, he never hurt, uh, hurt him, meanwhile though while that VAR check was going on, Barisic had to go off because he got caught in the back of the head. I still don't know what happened. I just I think it was maybe a flailing arm or something like that. So it drew blood and he had to uh, get bandaged up with the iconic bandaged head of a Croatian in, in our team. On the 35th minute, Dundee United with a shot from 20 yards and just wide. It was actually quite dangerous. On the 37th minute, my stream went down. And on the 38th minute, in typical fashion, just as my stream was coming up, we were celebrating a goal. Turned out it was Tillman that scored. And I've seen it back. Goldson plays the ball forward. Cantwell at the edge of the box. Stabs the ball to the right side of the box to Tillman, who controls it with one touch. And with his second touch on the bounce, shoots into the back of the net. Great goal. Fantastic. Again, Tillman's accuracy that, that, that gets me is his control first of all and then his second touch is usually a shot at goal and yet again another fantastic goal for him. Yes. And talking about a fantastic goal that nearly was on the 45th, 45th minute, an absolute stunning shot from 25 yards from Kent off the underside of the crossbar and cleared. What a goal that would have been. Yeah, de- definitely. Really unlucky there. Yeah, so that's how the half ended up. You know, a bar the two chances, got to be fairly happy with that. Again, though, playing at a pedestrian pace, not causing their keeper a great deal of pressure. No. 
So into the second half, 51st minute, a bizarre piece of refereeing here. Tavernier gets a yellow card for using his hand to fend off the player. It was right at the corner flag. The, the linesman was right in front of it. It was, if anything, which I still am unsure it even touched him, it was an accidental skiff off the boy's chin and he felt like back like he'd been shot. I don't know what the linesman was thinking about there. It was a bizarre piece of refereeing and linesman there. Yep, just as you said, Derek, right in front of the linesman as well. Nothing said and... You know, a very, very strange booking and tab really hard done to there. Yep. However, we rounded out the game a few minutes later because in the 55th minute, Tillman makes it 2-0. Dundee United had a shot saved by McGregor. We go right up the park, past the Tavernier on the right, who passes into the middle to Kent. One touch and falls to Tillman, who controls it, shoots under the body of a sliding in defender. May have took a touch into the back of the net off the defender, but I don't care. Great goal. Exactly, and exactly same again, Derek. One touch to control, one touch to shoot. So accurate, and it ends up in in, in the back of the net. Just exactly what it does. Exactly what I've been saying about him. Superb stuff. Yes, and just after that, on the 59th minute, he nearly got his hat trick because he had a first time shot on the edge of the box. It was curling in, but it was right at the keeper, and it was hit with pace. But the keeper had to take a second touch anyway. 72nd minute, Morelis with a shot at the edge of the box and a good save out for the corner. 73rd minute, Tavernier Morelis off, right and Sakala on. 74th minute, cross in from the right by Kent to the back post. The bandaged Barisic jumps up and gets ahead to it, but just wide. That would have been an iconic goal, that, from a yeah. bandaged player. 85th minute, Jack Cantwell and Kent off, Suter, Arfield and Cholak on. 86th minute, cross from right, Cholak's first touch is a header, just wide. 88th minute, a VAR check for a possible handball in the Dundee United box, not given, correct decision for me. And to round out the game, 93rd minute, Dundee United with a shot in our box from a corner kick, took a slight block and right into the path of McGregor. That's how the game ended up. So slightly better in the second half, did put their keeper under a wee bit of more pressure. Still too pedestrian up front, though. It, it was, but you know, I think the, the second goal came at the right time for us, Derek, because it kind of took the pressure off. So maybe ended up not being as as urgent as we would want it to be. So that's quite pleasing that way. Because if the second goal hadn't have went in, it could have been a completely different game altogether. Absolutely. So certainly two wins. And that led us into the big important game on Saturday the 8th of April. However, we lost 3-2 away against Celtic. It was in our hands and we threw it away, Dave. It was, Derek. You're saying it was in our hands. There were a few decisions in there as well that went against us, which, you know, in another day wouldn't have went against us. But I'll let you cover the game and give you my thoughts, Derek. Yes, so two changes from the Dundee United game. Goldson out with a knock and Lundstrom dropped to the bench. So we lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Suter, Davis, Barisic, Raskin, Jack, Cantwell, Kent, Morelis and Tillman. On the subs bench were McLaughlin, Redvan, Lundstrom, Hadji, Cholak, Kamara, Wright, Sakala and Arfield. Now, bar Goldson, obviously, that's the team we wanted to play in the final, wasn't it? It was. I'll speak about Davies later on, Derek. I'm got my major concerns about him but certainly Goldson you would have wanted to see in that team but the rest of the team just like what you said exactly the team that we were wanting to go out probably our strongest team if if, if we're being honest a few people would maybe prefer to Cholak to Alfredo Morelos but I, I would certainly say that, that that was our strongest lineup. Yes, just of note as well, and we haven't covered it previously, no away fans because there was some bizarre reason that Celtic didn't want any of our fans in there, so we decided no fans in for the next game coming up as well at Ibrox. Now, Dave, the the official line it was, it was security concerns. I know there's been a wee bit of issues with both sets of fans in the last couple of fixtures at Ibrox and obviously, obviously Parkhead. Uh, it's no been anywhere different from what has been the last time, uh, you know, any other time that the away fans have been at Ibrox and Parkhead. My, my opinion is, Dave, Celtic have once again threw the dummy out because they're not getting a full allocation of 8,500 fans at Ibrox and they're like, well, we don't get that, then you're not getting any fans at Parkhead and we're just going to say it's security issues. Again, and the, the the thing though, Derek, it gets thrown back as being this is all down to us, it's our fault and, and, and stuff like that. We all know the main reasons, Derek, but they'll, they'll, they'll never admit to that. Usually, usually 
a, a quite a big tr- travel and support there as they have for Ibrox. So we know everything that's happened o- over the last few years, but it will always get blamed on us. It will always get blamed on us in the media because we know how how, how the media are as well when it comes to us. So it's uh, it's like fighting a losing battle there, Derek. But we know exactly what the main reason was, but they would never admit to it. No, definitely not. So. The first half, overall good half, bar a five-minute spell where we conceded and we were on the ropes for a few minutes after that. We were on the front foot. We had the dig in midfield to the extent that we were forcing a lot of slack play from Celtic. The problem we had was our own slack play in, in the back for five minutes where we conceded in our final third. Well, what am I going to say? Two pedestrian. On the sixth minute, Celtic did have the ball in the back of the net, but it was ruled offside. Clear offside. It was their first attack, though. The ball was lobbed right into our box, a controlled shot. It was just poor defending once again. So even though it was offside, we maybe got a bit fortunate with that one, and it was a sign of the poor defending that was to come. Yeah, it was one of them, Derek, that we were saying to ourselves, if, if, if we can stay you know, strong for the first sort of 20, 25 minutes and g- g- grow into the game. And when the ball was in the back of the net, I thought, oh, worst possible start. But thankfully, it was called offside at that stage. And as you say, quite rightly, it was offside as well. But a bit of a scare nonetheless. Yes. 13th minute, it was a shot from Celtic on the left, but a comfortable save for McGregor. 18th minute, Jota on the right side, cuts inside, hits a shot from the edge of the box and a big save for McGregor. It didn't have to move, but it was hit from with pace. There's the difference. Opposition players getting shots off and they're making their keeper save. Yeah. We don't do that. No, definitely not. 20th minute. This is where the controversy was because we had the ball in the back of the net from a corner. Morelis and Johnson having a half-hearted wrestle. Nothing more than you would see at every other corner that's ever been. The defender falls to the ground. I think he actually more tried to go for a header, realised he wasn't getting it and he chucked himself to the ground. Morelis sticks out a leg and the ball goes into the back of the net. It was ruled off for a foul. A VAR check. I don't even think it went to a VAR check. I'm not too sure. Oh, it, it didn't, Derek, and that's the thing. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the goal whatsoever. Mikey Johnson had to hold Alfredo Morelos's arm. Alfredo had his arm down at the side of Mikey Johnson as well. And there was no, he wasn't leaning into him. He wasn't p- pulling him back. Alfredo actually stood his ground. Mikey Johnson made a complete backside of the clearance. He lost his balance while still holding on to him. Alfredo sticks his foot out, the ball's in the back of the net. It's a clear goal. What should have happened, Derek, which did, which didn't, and I don't know why everybody's no screaming for the rooftops, I know I was. The goal should have stood, and then it should have been reviewed by VAR. That's yeah. what should have happened, but it didn't. There was no VAR check whatsoever. It was just an absolute shambles. We, we all know it was uh, it was uh, referee Kevin Clancy. I knew there was going to be decisions like, like this, but that was absolutely blatant cheating. And in, in, in my opinion, Derek, and I don't usually say stuff like that, but it was. There was nothing wrong with that goal whatsoever. And the goal should have stood. And then any Dubai, it should have been a VAR check after that. And then a decision. And then if he'd have went over the monitor after that and said, no, no, it's a foul. And given it, we would have said, right, OK, he's actually checked VAR. But he didn't. The fact that the VAR wasn't even called into play whatsoever is an absolute disgrace and we were robbed of a goal there, Derek. I don't care what anybody says. I just don't understand that it was a clear and obvious error from the referee. Now, it was a referee that gave the decision. So a lot of people are saying, well, VAR is rightly not getting called into action there. But why? I don't understand that. It was a goal. As you said, the goal should have been given and yep. then the VAR check. Then so VAR. Yep. I don't see uh, what... what what is the point of VAR then if it's not um, meant to clear up a, a clear and obvious error like this? Absolute joke, Derek. And from that point, I was absolutely raging and I knew that we weren't going to get anything out of this game, regardless how well we played in the game. Don't get me wrong, we'll get into the defensive frailties, but that should have been 1-0 to Rangers right there. And 
as you've said before, if Andy Walker says it was a goal, it was a goal. <laughs> so, I mean, Andy Walker, the, I think there was a few um, of the pundits initially on Clyde were like, no, that was a correct decision by the referee, but they changed their mind after they seen it a few times. Yep. Every pundit has ended up turning around and saying there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. So Celtic turn around and say they don't get VAR decisions. Well, this is what happens when you put pressure on referees and VAR or, or the officiating. You know, well, they get decisions for them all the time. Derek, they were right. They never got a VAR decision because they well, never yeah. got Aye. a VAR in the first place. Yeah. That's, that's the most annoying thing for me about that whole incident was the goal should have stood and then it should have been reviewed by VAR and it didn't It didn't even get that far. Absolutely shocking. Yeah. And then in typical fashion, a few minutes later on the 26th minute, Celtic made it 1-0. The ball was played down our left channel cut back into the middle to Kyogo, he turns and shoots into the net. So, so simple. It was, you know, granted a, a good execution, but once again, down that side, and guess who's down that side, and who gets caught, caught out once again? The whole defence is needing overhauled, and none other than that goal there. So many errors, so simple. And for, for him, Derek, it's like almost carbon copy goals every single time he plays against us. He gets in between the two defenders and nobody picks him up. Nobody picks him up at all. And it's a simple cut ball across and, and into the box and just missed by everyone. And he's there. Do you say it was a good finish? But again, the ball should never go anywhere near him in the first instance. And it would just make it far too easy for, for him. And, you know, after what had just happened with Alfredo Morelos, for them to get the goal, that was just a sickness for me, the, the, the way the defence just gave, gave in like that. Yep. They were on the ropes for a good few minutes after that, but they never actually really put the keeper under any pressure. 29th minute, Tillman with a shot from distance, but it went well wide. 31st minute, Celtic cross in from the right. Suter volleys a clearance, hits off another defender at the near post and nearly in our own net. 31st minute, Jota with a shot from distance, trying to get it over McGregor, but he makes a save. And in the 45th minute, the last kick of the ball pretty much in the first half, an absolute stunner of a free kick from Tavernier from 25 yards up and over the wall into the back of the net, one each. An absolute belter of a free kick. Fantastic, Derek. I'll be honest with you, I was still raging from Alfredo's goal getting disallowed. Absolutely raging. So when Rangers scored that goal, it was more of a get it right up you rather than celebrating, if you know what I mean. But execution was absolutely perfect. But Tav, it was a great goal. And what we thought then to get us back level to go in at half time, silence the crowd a wee bit. Perfect timing, you know, to get that goal, wasn't it? Absolutely. So, into the second half, I think some people said we played fairly well the first 10, 15 minutes of the half, but I just didn't see it. I don't think we had the same fire overall in the second half as we did in the first half. We were still fairly comfortable, and then we give them two goals. Yep. Absolutely no point in playing decent if we're going to continually give goals away. Exactly like you said there, Derek, we gave them the goals. It wasn't them breaking us down, it was all down to us not being able to defend properly, which you're just about to get into. Yes. 50th minute, a crossfield pass to Tavernier at the edge of the box. A lovely touch by Tavernier on the right side. A cross in, attempted knock away, but falls to Morelos, who has a volley and a great save from the keeper out for the corner. 51st minute, the corner in with Morelos' header deflected off another defender. 57th minute, we cleared the ball off our line, but it was ruled offside in any case. Basically walked through our defence again, however. Yeah. Yep, definitely, yep. A sign of things to come, because in the 61st minute, Celtic made it 2-1, and all I've put here is, holy fuck. <laughs> I mean, this was a shocker of a, a goal to lose, and we've got a bad one coming up as well. The ball was crossed in on the deck, Davis tries to clear it, but it goes high in the air, he shrieks out of heading it, it hits off the Celtic attacker... Pure fluke goes across the face of goal, into the path of Kyogo, and he kind of shot it at an angle through a couple of players. And I think it went actually under the legs of McGregor at the near post. I, I'm lost for words, Dave. It was just diabolical for Davis. I am really, really concerned for the guy. The game's to, to, to follow as well. Haven't eased my opinion of him at all. It was That was the most basic, simplest defending is all you had to do there. Clear the ball the first time, 
he had an opportunity to head the ball away again. And as you quite could quite rightly said, if you can out jump one of the wee Celtic forwards and overpower them in the air to get the ball away for a corner, there's something far, far wrong. It was diabolical defending. And as you say, for even it to get back to Kyogo to shoot and it going through everyone and it even to sort of slither under McGregor as well, it was just a complete and utter shit show in defence. And he's not really the, the main culprit of this, but once again, McGregor getting beat at the near post. How, ma- how many more times is that going to happen? I know, Derek, again, no, a simple clearance right at the start. I would never have been in that position. That was just an embarrassment defending there. It really was. Yeah, they, they, they should actually show that to young kids that are playing in defence to show you how not to defend a ball because that was, honestly, it was absolutely diabolical. 68th minute, Tillman off and Sakala on. And then if we thought that goal was bad there, on the 73rd minute, Celtic made it 3-1 with an absolute calamity of a goal. Multiple points of failure once again in this. Just absolutely diabolical. Jack played a shitty pass to Suter. Now, in fairness to Jack, there was nothing on. Nobody was moving about for him and Celtic were just closing everyone down. But it was a shitty pass anyway. A very, very short pass back by Suter at a stupid angle to McGregor. It was a shitty pass back to give to a 41-year-old keeper. Jota nips in, rounds the keeper, hits it into the net. It was as simple as that. So you've got Jack, you've got Suter, and the fact that you've got McGregor there, he's a 41-year-old player who was never going to get to the ball to run to it, but he couldn't be bothered diving down either, which a more nimble and a younger keeper would have done as well. So how many points of failure do you need in one goal there? Exactly. And again, Derek, gifting them the goals, that's that's the most annoying thing. It wasn't the fact that they you know, came out with some incredible play and incredible move to break us down. It was all our fault. Another calamity in defence. And I actually thought that Suter had been playing quite well up, up to that point, Derek, and a, just a bad mistake by him at the end. As you say, McGregor was never getting to it, but he gave up. As soon as the ball got played back and he wasn't getting to it, he gave up. It was simple stuff and just bitterly disappointing. And again, just I keep saying it, calamity and diabolical, but that's, that's all the defending was in that game. And see, to be honest with you, after that, I feared an absolute collapse. Fortunately, though, that never happened because on the 79th minute, Tavernier made it 3-2. Barisic with a long ball from the right to the back post. Tavernier with a header down into the ground and into the back. And a great goal and a a great piece of skill from both Barisic and Tavernier there. 80th minute, Tavernier just after that, he gets another header, this time down the other side. Barisic down the other side and Tavernier at the back post to the other side this time as well. But it went just wide. Really unlucky that. Here's a point I want to pick up with that there. There you've got your left back getting a cross in from the left side. You've got your right back getting a header at the back post. And then you switch both the players opposite sides. You've got your left back going down the right and your right back getting a, a header at the left side. Now, that's fair enough. But where the fuck is Kent in this? Yep. You would have thought he was going to be either one, the provider, or two, getting on the end of it. But where the fuck was he? Don't get, get me wrong, Derek. I've said time and time again, to get the best out of James T- T- Tavernier, you need him as far up the field as possible. We know he's not a defender. So to get the best of him, and that's when we, we did get the best of him in, in, in that game, and he was really unlucky with the second head that I actually thought he'd scored it to make it 3-3 wasn't to be. But as you say, our forward play, maybe that's the reason that Tav said, fuck it, and got up in, in, into the box because he knew that we weren't doing anything up front. You know, he maybe t- took it upon himself to, to do it the twice and, you know, he almost got the hat trick there, but it wasn't to be. I mean, this is the, the, the big thing with the, the front line is where the fuck are they half the time? I mean, there's, it's not the first time Tavenier has got in the attacking position where Morelos should be. You know, Morelos is dropping back far too much. Kenny Miller used to do that all the time, drop too far back. And then when the play did get played forward, he couldn't keep up with play. So he was in no man's land and you had a defender try to get on the end of a striker's cross. It happens too often. Yeah. I mean, it's just so frustrating. Yep. Anyway, 86 minute, Jack and Cantwell off, Lundstrom and Cholak on. 95th minute, Barisic with a free kick over the bar from 18 yards. And that was really it. That's how the, the game ended up. And... 
That was league over. Simple yeah. as it. It was going to be a tough ask, even if we beat Celtic in this game, to come back and win the league. But absolutely no hope now. That's 12 points behind. Yeah, and like I say, I'm, I'm repeating myself here, Derek, but all our own making, unfortunately, that is the uh, annoying thing about it. There was a few times that Celtic b- broke us down and forced a, a shot at the, the goalkeeper in the first half, but really didn't do that much to us in the whole game. We just have to be the ones that actually supply them with the chances, and that is the most frustrating thing out of it all. Really, really poor by us. And, you know, as you say, the league was over anyway, Derek, but I just wanted to, to lay a glove on them. I wanted to, the players to go in, especially at, at Celtic Park, we know away fans there, and come away with something to put a bit of doubt in there. But again, it's uh, it's our own downfall. You know, it's, it's it, it, we are the, the, the masters of our, of our own downfall with the mistakes that, that we are making. Just, just shocking stuff. It, it really was. Yeah, so the inevitable fallout after an old firm game. Shortly after the game, Rangers confirmed that it would be contacting the SFA regarding the disallowed goal. Most pundits, as I said, did state the goal that the, the goal should have stood. Then the SFA, like a day later or a couple of days later, stated that they've passed a number of threats made to Clancy over to the police. They made reference to his personal and professional contact details, so that were, that the fact that they were made public. Now, Dave, it goes without saying, any threats are an absolute disgrace. Yep. They have no place in football, certainly no place in our club. Leave it to that other mob to disgrace themselves, and I hope that the full weight of the law does come down on those who have made any substantiated threats like that. But that said, and it's not a case of what about it here, this is just pure facts here. Where was the SFA statement last month when Celtic, Celtic the club, sanctioned a banner about a Tory referee? Where was the SFA statement when Beaton was abused by Celtic fans a few years ago? And another thing, it's one thing for personal details to be posted online, but I'm pretty sure his professional contact details will already already be in the public domain. Most workplaces have got a standardised format of of email addresses, so I'm guessing we're talking about the, the SFA, we're talking about emails. So why are they making an issue with his professional contact details being made public? And then, a man so fucking dim that he would make a 100 watt light bulb look like a fucking black hole. Michael Stewart tweeted at the (laughs) fact that we had written to the SFA shows that level of entitlement Rangers have is incredible. Uh I mean, is Zach Fudd really that stupid? He hadn't tweeted in about three weeks Uh, and his last two tweets were about how VAR was being a shambles that needs sorted out. I mean, that guy is an absolute plum. He really is. He's no self-awareness. The SFA then confirmed that they had spoken to us and confirmed that the decision was correct. Of course they were going to say that, Dave, weren't they? Rangers then stated that they were astonished at that response and highlighted the fact that in England, when a mistake was made, they came out with an apology. And even though it doesn't change the outcome of the game, it's used as a learning point. I mean, this is the SFA over the back. Rather than admit their shortcomings, they stick their head in the sand, pretend it didn't happen and hope it goes away. It's all highlighting their deficiencies once again. Uh, it's, it's, it's an absolute shambles, Derek. It, it, it really was. As I say, I'm still fuming about that chance. I mean, the, the, there was actually another ch- uh, opportunity d- during the match where I thought there was a clear handball in the box where it was a, a you know another chance that Alfredo Morelos had. Sorry, not a, a handball where he was pulled back quite clearly in the box as well when there was a shot g- t- taken off, which quite clearly could have been a penalty or went to VAR as well. It's just uh, it's exactly what you said. The, the SFA were never, ever going to turn around and admit that they were wrong at any stage. The SFA are not like that. Or they'll never, ever do anything like that. They will always back their referees, e- even if they're for their absolute stinker. And that's exactly what Clancy had, an absolute stinker. I actually forgot to mention that, Dave. The fact that you mentioned that there, that there was actually two fouls in that same instant with Morelos getting clearly pulled back by his shot. And I can't remember who it was, but one of the Celtic defenders in that same move was actually bear-hugging our attacker to stop yeah. him moving. Uh, so it should have, been, should have been a penalty for either one of the instants there, yeah. but nothing given. Nothing, not even Tavar or anything like that, Derek, at all. Again, which makes an absolute mockery of how it's being used. 
Yep. There were several other instances as well from Clancy where we were on the break and he just decided to pull the game back for some weird yep. reason. Uh, just absolutely shambolic and, you know... <sighs> This is the problem, as I highlighted and as Rangers highlighted, there's learning points from down in England. We've actually seen two high-profile referees get pulled off for, for, for making fucking shambolic mistakes like that. So it doesn't happen up here, though. No. Anyway, next game after that was against St Murden. It was on Saturday the 15th of April where we won 5-2 at home. It was another slog though, Dave, wasn't it? It certainly was, up until the last sort of 15 minutes, Derek, it definitely was. Now, I missed the game, so I had to watch it back, but we made two changes from the Celtic game. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Suter, Davis, Barisic, Raskin, Lundstrom, Cantwell, Tillman, Sakala and Morelis. On the subs bench, we have McLaughlin, Hadji, Matondo, Kamara, Arfield, King, McCausland, Lyle and Rice. So, a very quick summary of the game here. On the yep. fourth minute, it was a penalty to Rangers. Morelis plays a pass into the box. Raskin, who was running in, clearly taken out. A long VAR check, no idea why, penalty was finally given. However, on the fifth minute, Tavenier steps up, hits it to the left. It was at good diving height, and the keeper saves it. Pish. It was. <laughs> we, were, we were expecting it to be you know, an, an early lead, Derek, because we thought this was going to be a difficult game, which it did t- t- turn out to be, but an early goal would certainly have eased the nerves there, but unfortunately it wasn't to be. Yes. 26 minute, we went 1-0 up with Cantwell scoring. Quick one-touch play, Tillman feeds the ball to Sakala in the box on the right, who passes to Tavenier, who plays the ball across goal in front of the defenders to Cantwell, who taps it home from three yards. There was a lengthy VAR check for offside, absolutely no chance. There was certainly no need for it to be as long as it was either. No, definitely. And a great finish by Cantwell, to be fair to him as well. Derek, very composed. When he put put it in there, as you say, we were left to wait for quite some time before it was eventually given. Yes. However, just on the stroke of half time, on the 47th minute, St Mirren made it one each. The ball wasn't cleared properly. We had several chances to clear it. It was flicked to O'Hara just inside of the box, who chased it away from the defender on the right, and he hits a stunning volley into the far corner. Dave... Can he take it away from that goal? It makes a change from being beat by a wonder strike for a change. <laughs> However, we had several opportunities to clear it. We did, Derek. Like I said, O'Hara, I think, is a, f- a fantastic player. Derek, another uh, talent in, uh, in Scotland playing for, no disrespect for them, one of the uh, teams lower down in the league. Uh, they should be playing a lot higher. But he, again, shown how good a player he is. Not even j- just for that goal. In the whole game, he was outstanding, Derek. But... That was an absolutely stunning strike and one that he'll remember for a long time. But as you say, we had the chance to clear it to start off with before it got put up into the air, but the execution was fantastic. Yes. So a bit deflated going into the second half, but we didn't need to wait too much longer to get a goal up because on the 48th minute, Sakala made it 2-1. It was a free kick from 30 yards on the right, floated into the near post and a glancing header by Sakala into the net. Great header. It certainly was. It's something that we don't see a, a lot from him, but you know, aware, awareness was excellent and great that we managed to score early on in the second half and really pleased for him as well, Derek. Yes. On the 61st minute, though, he did come off for Matondo and on the 65th minute, just like in the Motherwell game, St Mirren made it two each. It was a corner in, in from the right, initially cleared, but not very well, played back into the box, made an arse of clearing it, ball flicked up in the air, knocked to the edge of the box and shot in. Just sloppy all round, Dave. It was very sloppy. Again, great execution. I think it was O'Hara that got the second one as well, Derek. I think so. Great, great execution by him as well. Accuracy, but standard of defending. Absolutely diabolical, Derek. Yep, absolutely. 77th minute, Davis, Tillman and Raskin off. Kamara, Hadji and Arfield on. And then in the 79th minute, Morelis made it 3-2. It was good work switching the ball from left to right. Out to Tavenier, who crosses the ball in. Cantwell with a header that was going wide, but was trapped by Morelis from six yards, who controls it and taps it in. Morelis gets his brace on the 81st minute and makes it 4-2. A long ball knocked from midfield to the left to Matondo, who ran with the ball. A lovely cut back, threaded through the defence to Morelis, who had a first-timer into the back of the net. It was initially ruled offside. After a lengthy VAR check, the goal was confirmed. Just brilliant play from Matondo there. 
Yeah, it was great to see Derek. We f- forgot about him, and especially you know he, he came on with his new skinhead ha- haircut because we were used to seeing him with his long longer hair. We're like, who's who's this guy? We f- forgot he was actually there. But great for him, Derek, because you know he wouldn't be thinking, you know, if I played my last game or you know I'm going to get v- very l- limited chances here. So so for him to be to get an assist there, but take. Not nothing away. It was a great move and a great awareness by him, and then a fantastic finish by Alfredo. And that's, you know, what we've been missing from him, isn't it? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Eighty-six minute, we round out the game, made it five-two with Arfield scoring. Cantwell gets the ball on the left near the halfway line. A lovely run, taking on players, driving inwards. A lovely through ball to Arfield in the box, and a one touch through the keeper's legs into the back of the net. Just absolutely outstanding from Cantwell there. It wasn't Derek, he never mentioned that the no look pass. That's oh, yes. what everybody was saying. It was it was fantastic. He just looked he, he, he was he was in the mood at that stage, dancing with the ball right the way through, looked away to his right, but passed the ball to the left when he saw Arfield making the run and trademark Scott Arfield late run in, into the box and just manages to poke it past the keeper to round off to do you know make the scoreline a hell of a lot better because, Derek, let's be honest, it was a tight game up until that third goal went in, wasn't it? Yeah, squeaky bum time for a good minute, but, you know, certainly their arses collapsed and we capitalised on that, which is, you know, what you want to see, but we should be doing it a lot earlier and not giving them goals like we have been doing. Just to round out the game, Tavernier came off on the 88th minute and King came on, so... Good to get the three points, but, you know, worrying signs as well still. Definitely, yes. We made it quite hard for ourselves, but thankfully I think the additions from the bench, maybe that's what gave us the the, the upper hand there. Derek has been able to bring on certain guys, especially like Matondo and Arfield, to come on and change it. Yes. So, into the last game we've got to cover, Sunday the 23rd of April, it was a 2-0 loss away against Aberdeen. Now, only Rangers, on a rare weekend that Celtic drop points, only Rangers could make Celtic still go points ahead of us. Yeah. Fucking disgraceful, Dave. You could have written it, Derek. We just knew that something like that was going to happen. We knew that Aberdeen would do their usual, come out and treat it like a cup final. We knew it was going to be a hard game. But again, Derek, as we're about to get into just so lackadaisical from us, I've used that word so many times, but oh, I don't think I've seen so many misplaced passes from a Rangers team in a long, long time. It was just, it was just a poor, poor performance. Well, Dave, I've absolutely no notes for this, so do yep. you want to bre- yep. very briefly cover yep. this game? It was an un- unchanged team from the St Mirren game, Derek, which you gave McGregor, Tavernier, Suter, Davies, Barisic, Lundstrom, Raskin, Cantwell, Tillman, Fashion, Junior and Morelos with McLaughlin, Ridvan, Hadji, Matondo, Kamara, Arfield, King, Lovelace and Rice on the bench. So first 10 minutes, nothing much happening. Rangers doing their usual bulk of possession and it wasn't until the 12th minute that we had the first sort of real chance and it was a Tavernier cross to the back post that was headed back into the middle of the box by Fashion Sakala. Alfredo Morelos with his back to goal, takes it under control, shoots, twists, has a fantastic shot. Defender on the line, manages to clear it and falls straight to Lundstrom at the edge of the box, who just, I don't know what he was doing, Derek, he just just, just decided to have a swing. He just knew by his body language that there wasn't going to be anything in it and he skied it over the bar. It was a great opportunity to score early on. Morelos unlucky, as I say, I think the Lundstrom should have done a hell of a lot better, but it wasn't to be. And then only a minute later was the chance of the game for Rangers, and it was Malik Tillman with a fantastic through ball to Fashion Sakala, who still had work to do. He had a defender with him, but a one touch by Sakala got him free, the defender, and there he was, one and one with the goalkeeper. In plenty of time, he takes his shot straight away. The goalkeeper manages to save it with his feet. It was an incredible chance. In hindsight, you might have been able to take it round him. Derek, I'm usually happy when a player takes a first-time shot in, in, in situations like that, but just a huge chance missed. 19th minute, Sakala and Tillman with a 1-2 in the edge of the box. Fashion Sakala finds space. 
but he had a defender with him. He decides to shoot and he shoots well over. But if he'd have just have taken that one extra pass into the left, Tillman had got himself free again and would have been clear to go on and have a strike with just the goalkeeper to beat. So another missed opportunity. Then on the 25th minute, a great move from one side of the pitch to the other, ending with Bob Borna Barisic having the ball laid off to him by Malik Tillman just on the left hand side of the box. And another incredible chance. All I had to do was hit the target. Puts it just wide of the post. Really, really poor from there. And then on the 40th minute, this is when Aberdeen were starting to come back in, in the game. Davies, no pressure at all. Passes the ball straight to the Ab- Aberdeen striker. He runs through and shoots. Thankfully, it's saved by Alan McGregor and put out for a corner. Some more sloppy play, giving the ball away. Just before half time. James Tavernier, he attempts to find Raskin in the middle of the park, but he passes it straight again to an Aberdeen player. They run through on goal, shoots, shoots wide. Thankfully, he didn't look up because he had two of his teammates right in the centre of the box, which would have had an easy shot on goal for them. So again, giving the, the ball away, half-time whistle blew. I looked at the stats, 79% possession and only two shots on goal, Derek. Really really not good enough from us there. And in, into the second half, and really, it was a bit of a disaster. It started off with us, you know, again, trying to get on the ball, trying to keep possession. A long ball from Davies to Sakala in the box. He lays the ball back to John Lundstrom, who shoots again, shoots wide. Turns out Sakala was offside. I'm not sure about that one either, Derek. That was very questionable. Didn't matter anyway. But then, only a minute later, Aberdeen scored their first goal. Complete fluke. I don't care what anybody says. I know the player was having a laugh and stuff like that. But Rangers, again, try and play the ball out from the back. They try and play it up to the halfway line on the right-hand side. Picked off by the Aberdeen winger. He runs along and puts in a huge, long cross into the box. There's nobody even running in. But it catches everyone out, including Alan McGregor, and sails right into the top corner of the net. Sheer luck. It was, again, our own fault for giving the ball away that we even got the chance. But you can't do anything about goals like that sometimes. It's, uh, it was totally against the run of play as well because we had started off quite well. And that was us up, up, up against it, Derek. Just a really, really poor start to the second half after that. And then it was only eight minutes that Aberdeen got the second goal, which again, I think was offside 100%. It did go to VAR. It was a cross in from, from the left and Majofsky got in between Barisic and Davies, who just kind of stood and looked at each other as he jumped in, in between them. Scored a very good header, but I was sure that both him and the other Aberdeen attacker were both off, but a VR check and the goal was allowed to stand. 64th minute, Raskin, who was very, very quiet. Uh, some say that he'd possibly carry an injury. He came off, Matondo came on. Then we really should have got one back because James Tavernier had a shot point blank range in the box, but it fell, it was straight at the goalkeeper, a couple of inches either side, he would definitely have scored. 75th minute, a great through ball from Tillman to Matondo, who shoots and clips the edge of the, the, the post. That's when we knew that we just weren't getting anything at all. And that was really it. After that, Derek, with a few chances, to, Tillman had a glancing header past the post in the 84th minute. Uh, there was eight minutes of injury time because Aberdeen do what Aberdeen do and try and waste as much time and slow the game down as possible as, you know, as as, as the right to do. But all I've got here, Derek, lackadaisical defending, misplaced passing, lots of possession, but cannot get a shot on target. Very poor performance. I mean, not seeing the game. You could that- have ripped that. After watching yeah. us in the last few games, couldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, from what I've heard and what I've I've read about, it just seems like what what what's happened all season long. Poor defending, poor up front, just uh, having a lot of possession and not doing anything with it. Now the goals, Dave. Yes, there was a bit of flukiness towards Aberdeen's first goal. The wind appeared to catch it. I do think McGregor could have done better. He's he, uh, for me. He, one of his downfalls is he's always too far off his line. 
and then a 41 year old keeper scrambling to try and get back you know that's he could have done better for me the second goal Dave I've got to disagree it wasn't the offside it was marginal but it wasn't offside you can't be offside with an arm unfortunately an arm, you can only be offside with a legal part where you're allowed to to touch the ball with and, and, and play the ball with the foot was playing him onside and the other opposition Aberdeen player he was, wasn't interfering with play because he actually was starting to run back up the park and he never interfered with play. So for me, it was onside and just unfortunately there. But again, the defending was shambolic there. I, I don't understand what the defence was doing. Just, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss, Dave, because yep. some of these players now, th- there's no desire in them. Some of these players that they're out of contract, some of these players clearly just don't get it. I mean, it, it starts from... The, the back onwards you don't need to have a 41 year old keeper there what does that say for the, the likes of Robbie McCrory um, you know the, the, the back line you've, you've got Goldson and yes he's probably the best centre back we've got but to be honest Dave that's not saying nothing because he's made a hell of a lot of blunders too Davis the, the, the jury's out on him he makes too many mistakes uh, Suter you know he's I, I think he's one of these players who I think you've seen at Hearts, he's a great defender, but I think he's been out injured that long. I think his confidence is gone. Tavernier, you've seen a great second half performance from Tavernier, but that's on the attacking sense. I just think Tavernier has had too many slip ups in big games now. Uh, I just don't understand where it's all gone wrong. The midfield needs ready out, and the attack, don't even get me started. The, the attack is just fucking abysmal. We just don't take shots. And when we do, it's generally off off target and we don't put the keeper under pressure. And when we actually get a shot off that we make the keeper make a save, it's right at the keeper. So the the whole thing, the whole system is needing overhauled. Uh, people are saying get Beal out, he's not improved us. I think that's absolute bollocks, Dave. He has improved us. He's, he's taken a, a largely losing team to be at least consistent winners. And yes, we lost against Celtic and Aberdeen, but that's really the only two blips we've, we've really had. The, the two... The, three Celtic games and the Aberdeen game there under Beal and we're getting towards the end of the season when the league was over God knows I think Beal needs to be a wee bit more wise though when he's talking in, in press conferences because one minute he's saying that players are going to be out the door and the next minute he's saying well this team whoever played is going to be here so yeah, fans they, don't know what they're doing and so if the fans don't know what, what's happening how are players meant to know? From his last press conference, he basically said, apart from the goalkeeper and Alfredo, he was expecting everybody else to be back. I hope, I hope that's wrong because there's loads of players that I would like to see leave. There's, you know, only a handful of that squad that I would want to remain at the team. But it is worrying, Derek. We we don't know what the the, the finances are going to be like for next season, so we don't know what type of players. But I don't get that whole you need tons and tons of money to have a successful team in Scotland. You really don't. You just have to be wise in the players that you bring in. You can pick up loads of free tri- g- g- guys whose c- contracts have run out that will be absolute class. You just need to have the right management. I just hope that he has got the right management, Derek, and he has got the knowledge of the players that he wants to bring in that are going to be a big help to us. And I know you that you were on, on, on about the attack, but I honestly think it's the defence that needs to be sorted out first. First and fo- foremost, we need another centre-half, we need a new goal- goalkeeper, and what goes on at full-back, I, I don't know. And In and, and one hand, you look at everything that James Tavenier's done for us, but on the other hand, you look at the defensive side of things, it's not good enough, so... It's just a quandary, but uh, I think it's a bit of a mess, Derek. I hate being so down on the team, but the squad has been together. The, the core of that squad has been together too long, and we've now gone too too long without you know winning anything really. And if it wasn't for that European run last year, last year would have been a complete disaster as well. I know we got the Scottish Cup in the end, but that was all that sa- saved the squad for last season as well, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, as I said earlier in this podcast, is the fifty-five season we got had a record-breaking defence because they done the basics. Nobody was trying to be fancy; they just done the basics right. If they were in doubt, they just cleared that. Even if it meant losing possession and putting it out for a throw-in or a corner, they just done the basics, and that's what they done. 
you you seen in Davis in that goal, the, the the Celtics goal when he just flicked it up and rather than put it out for the corner and just clear it, he just completely fluffed it because he tried to retain possession. Get the ball out. I don't care if we lose a corner from it. Get the ball out. Do the basics. But we'll need to just wait and see what, what happens there. So in the table, we've played 33, won 25, drawn four, lost four, scored 81, conceded 34, goal difference 47, and we're on 79 points. So 13 behind Celtic now, and an absolute fuck ton of goal difference behind as well. I've, I've lost count now. And we're a shit ton uh, ahead at Aberdeen as well. So that result really has no, no impact there. But games to come... We've only got so far is the Sunday the thirtieth of April. It's the semi final against Celtic at Hamden. That's a thirteen thirty kickoff, I think it is. So that's that game is is our season now, really, isn't it? It, it is, Derek. It, it really is. We're not exaggerating it here. That you know, it all boils down to that game. And do we feel confident? We we really don't. I just hope that. <laughs> Like I said in the last game, that the players just turn up, Derek. We, we've already shown at Hamden, Celtic didn't play particularly well against us, but we were just worse than what they were. And if we'd have just a shoot showed up in a few key positions, we would have probably got the victory in the final. But we didn't. Uh, we just we just need the team to show up, Derek. We, we, we really do. We need the defence not to give away any stupid goals. That's the most frustrating thing for me is the fact that it's our own fault that we are losing these goals because we're giving the ball away so cheaply and not defending. That just need, needs to be cut out straight away. But I'm being honest, Derek, I'm not confident. I hope and pray that we manage to do something and you know get through to the, the, the final. But we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Yes. So we'll now go into the news. So the first thing we've got to cover here is Douglas Park has stepped down as chairman and yep. John Bennett takes up his role. Uh, I, I believe it had been planned that Park was going to step down at some point. There was certainly online, there was more praise than not, but there was still a sizable minority completely forgetting what that man has done for us. He was one of the three yeah. bears after all. He's pumped money in when needed and we owe him a debt of gratitude for yeah. still having a club, or certainly at yeah. least one that's worth supporting. Too many reactions fans with short term memories so certainly he goes with our absolute heartfelt thanks yeah, that one definitely the concerning thing though is we've still not heard from Bennett you would have expected the chairman to step out and say this is what's going to happen or, or we'll have some sort of communication but nothing so John Bennett normally one of the ones who are quite good at communication we've heard fuck all from him yeah no it's a strange one Derek you would think we're a new chairman step in that uh, you know there would have been something about the plans for the future, just to try and get the fans. I'm not say on side, but at least to to show the fans that he is there and he, he's willing to talk. But quite strange that it has been silent totally. But exactly what what you said there about Douglas Park, Derek, what he's done for us, you know, a huge factor of the you know the, the factors get, getting back and and getting our club back. So. A huge debt to him, but you know, very, very strange. Like you said, I hope that there is something comes out, and hopefully, we'll have some good news for us. Yes. Next one here, as we kind of buried the lead as well, because after weeks of protests, Ross Wilson has left the club to yep. go to Nottingham Forest. We apparently got around a hundred and forty thousand <laughs> pound compensation from, so uh, you know, more money than we're going to get for Morelis and Kent combined. <laughs> I mean, it was all done very quickly. Some say that he's uh, gone before he was pushed. However, he basically was pushed, wasn't he, given the protest? Certainly, he's, he has a patchy record, a few successes, a few loans, and we've obviously had a few failures in the, that as well. I think the big issue in terms of the signings was the money spent. Have we really got value? I can't say that we really have. And also, we've also allowed high-value assets to go out the door for nothing. That again, though, is part of you know Stephen Gerrard's fault for not allowing yeah. players to be sold. I think one of the things that that kind of came out of the the thanks that he was given by the club is that his remit just wasn't about players. You know, there's certainly lots of other parts of other roles that he undertook as well, which I don't think f people fully appreciated, and certainly I wasn't aware of some of the stuff he'd done. 
again, that leads down to the poor communication from the club, yeah, though, doesn't it? Definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's rumoured that uh, Michael Beale might go himself and we might not replace the, the director of football role. And certainly Michael Beale seems pretty confident about the players that he's got in, ta- in mind and deals are currently kind of getting, trying to get underway as well. Here's hoping, and here's hoping that they get done qu- quickly, Derek, and no delays. And, you know, as you say, transparent he is, he is quite, well, I'll say quite, he's very tr- transparent in his in, in interviews that, that he gives. So we'll probably find out sooner rather than later. Yeah, pro- probably so. Yep. Next thing, £1.93 million worth of shares were issued at 25 pence per share. I believe it was part of a pre planned cash injection for projects. And then after that, a week later, I think it's just happened there, another 3 million shares were, were issued as well. So I think that uh, went to some of the directors because I've seen the story about um, John Bennett actually up in his shareholding as well. So, um, you know, obviously all the orcs on the other side are raging about this. So oh, how many more share issues do they I mean, it's all above board and all legal, you know, all yep. pre-planned. So. Yep. Yes, another thing here, in typical form after an old firm loss, Dave King issued a statement saying various things and that he also turned down an offer for his shares that were not from the Kyle Fox, or Kylie Fox, I still don't know how the fuck you pronounce her name, They're not from her group, but they were valued at 40 pence per share, so it would have netted him £25 million, which is more than he paid for them. Ooh. I mean, a bit strange him turning down that amount of money, especially if it made him more, but... Sometimes you just never know with King what is yeah. the truth and what's a bit a bit embellished. Yeah, we, we we do, and it always, as you say, Derek, he always seems to come out and speak after there's been a bad defeat somewhere, and he knows that the fans are really p- pissed off. I don't know what his angle is at all, Derek. If he's going to come out and back the club even more than do it, but uh, yeah, the, the 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 statements are always quite strange, and especially the timing. Yep. And talking of Kylie Fox, they have withdrawn their takeover proposal as a number of conditions were not met or agreed with. Apparently they were looking for something like anti-dilution rights protection, two board member seats, access to the data room, because apparently their whole plan was about NFTs and e-sports and all that kind of shit, so they would need a lot of user data effectively, so our email addresses, etc. And obviously management issue interviews as well. So apparently there was nine months of talks and it was met with resistance from a number of the top shareholders. So it's good that we're looking for investments, but I'm kind of glad this one has kind of fallen by the wayside because some of it just didn't add up, especially with esports and NFTs. Just um, I don't see where the money in that is, is in that for yeah. Rangers. Next thing here, Castor have admitted that they were caught unaware with the avalanche of demand for Rangers tops. No shit, Sherlock. (laughs) I don't know how we can say that, Derek, when you saw everything that happened before Castor came in with the amount of... uh, Even when the whole Sports Direct thing was there, when the ban got lifted, the amount of people that were clambering to get strips, you know, they've obviously not done the homework very well at all or have been very naive one of the two. I mean, they were told, so they should have doubled it and then doubled it again. But, yep. you know, naivety of, yep. a, of a company. Yep. And just when you think our kit woes are over, administrators for the elite group have confirmed that they're going to pursue a £9.5 million compensation court case against us for breaking the elite deal. Now, basically, we cut their contract a year short in 2020. Uh, Apparently, we signed a three-year deal in 2018. However, we signed the Castor deal in 2020. So... They actually won a court case just like Mike Ashley did uh, to reveal the kit sales that Castor done for us in that, that year. Then Elite, they went into admin because they've obviously got their own money issues, so it went quiet for a bit. So it's nothing new. Uh, it's just that they've confirmed that they're going to go after us now. The Rangers did argue in that case to reveal the sales. That is the fact that the deals for Castor and the Elite group were completely different. Elite were just manufacturers, whereas Castor are entire merchandise. They represent that whole side yep. of it. So it's a completely different deal. And once yep. again, I cannot fathom how a judge can say that sales with one company 
can be comparable to another company, much like when it happened with Sports Direct, considering there was discontent with the elite deal, given the rumours that there was Sports Direct involvement, fans were boycotting, there was unsurety about the elite deal as well. I mean, I can get that they will get compensation for that year's deal, but I can imagine it's going to be nowhere near the £9.5 yeah. million pound they're claiming. Yeah. Then again, this whole thing with their kit deal has been a shit show, so who knows what will happen. Yeah. Next thing here is women's coach Craig McPherson has been banned for six games by the SFA for headbutting Celtic women's coach Fran Alonso after the final whistle in a recent women's old firm clash. Police are apparently investigating it also. I don't know if that's still ongoing, but he's apologised. Dave, we really can't be doing that. For me, that should have been a second. No, I actually saw it happen on the TV, Derek, and I was absolutely shocked at what I saw. Apologies or not. Don't want to say again to too much, Derek, you know, because there's a police investigation, but for what I saw on the TV, completely inexcusable there. And the man is very lucky that all he's got out of this is a six, six man um, match ban. That's all I can say. Yeah, of course, the Ox piped up only six matches. That's shocking, but oh, fucking hell, I can't be arsed with them. No. No. Anyway, fresh from his Hall of Fame in induction, Alan McGregor, as I said, hit 500 appearances for Rangers when we played Dundee United. And he's also going to get a testimonial on the 18th of July against Newcastle. Yep, fantastic. So I'm sure they'll bring a huge support with them as well, Derek, considering how well they're playing at, at the moment as well. So that'll be a fantastic occasion. So, well, Let's just hope they don't put five against us, past us in 21 minutes this time. Exactly, yes. yes. Only hope. <laughs> and the last piece of Rangers news here, a bit weird as well. Former player Juan Alegria has blasted the club for not having a plan for him and really just treating him like shit, according to him. He didn't appear too happy that he was put in, straight into the B team and then loaned out a couple of times. He seemed to be doing the job in the B team. However... You have to temper that with the level that the B team are playing at. He didn't do anything at Partick, when he, but he did score a few for Falkirk. Now, here's the thing with, with B team players. Now, I agree that some of the youth players should be getting more bled in, but we've got to balance that with the needs of the first team. We need to win games, simple as. So we can't be giving players chances if they're not fully ready. However... When players, it doesn't work out for a lot of the youth players. You don't hear many of them complaining when it doesn't work out. So I think maybe he's trying to shift a bit of the blame for him being shit and he's <laughs> maybe thinking he's a bit better than he is, you know. I think uh, you've you've got, I mean, I've uh, watched how he's been getting on when he was on loan at Falkirk. He's there alongside Kai Kennedy. Kai Kennedy, who has been probably Falkirk's top player uh, this season or, you know, They've got a top goal scorer, the guy Morrison, that's that scored all the goals. But Kennedy certainly been their star player, scored a lot of goals, set up set up a lot of goals in comparison to Allegria, who has only had a few starts for them. Derek, so can't really be doing much on there. So you've really got to go. It's it's a step up for what the B League are playing. If you can't hack it playing in the first division, especially for one of the best teams in the first division then uh, there's definitely a problem there because all you've got to do is just look at what Kai Kennedy's done. He's going to come back re rejuvenated, hopefully, maybe get a wee chance, but he's flourished whereas Allegria has not done so. So, you know, no harm no harm to the guy. He came over, we tried, tried it, it's no worked out for him and I believe he's away back to, is it, is it Finland that he's away back to, Derek? I have no idea, I don't care. There it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, male porn star suffers life-changing penis injury after a horror accident on set. Okay. The words penis and injury spark shudders in men all over the world when they're used in a sentence. So if you're a bit squeamish about accidents that happen downstairs, then you should oh. probably just end the podcast just now. <laughs> Liam Ellis, a former bricky turned porn star. <laughs> I mean, come on, could you get any more cliched there? He could be a plumber maybe, I don't know has revealed what happened to his Johnson while he was shooting some <laughs> X-rated content. Speaking to the Daily Mail, the adult film star said that it all happened so fast. Basically, I was having sex at the time and it slipped out and I was still in motion so I wasn't lined up, he said. That <laughs> caused my penis to bend and tear, resulting in a penile fracture. <laughs> Apparently, it's a little different to other fractures in the body because there's no actual bones inside the penis. 
During the erection, the penis is engorged, so the blood fills with the two cylinders. If the engorged penis is bent suddenly or forcibly, the trauma can rupture the outer lining of one of the two cylinders. This can result in a penis fracture. The image that has been conjured at the moment is one of pure and utter pain. Liam said that he wasn't initially in any sort of bother when it happened. However, after a while, his penis started turning black and was getting swollen <laughs> and not in a good way. So apparently he's undergone surgery to correct it. <laughs> Derek, a story and a medical lesson at the same time. Well, apparently he got a free circumcision out of it as well, which is something he always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> every cloud, eh? Yes, every cloud. <laughs> so, on that note, we will end the podcast. Yes. Yes, I'm glad we can end this podcast in a yeah. slight bit of hilarity because it's yep. not been a not been a fun one given no. the league's over and we're playing shite. So, um, Dave, we've got to look at the weekend and <laughs> we're, we've got to take heart, I suppose, out of the fact that we did, like Cantwell said, as we gifted Celtic that victory in the last game. We played by far, I would say, bar five minutes in the first half and a couple of minutes in the second half. We were on top for a lot of it and controlled the midfield, which we have struggled to do. It's, we just need to stop the defensive mistakes yeah. and be a wee bit more switched on up front. Or sorry, a lot more switched on up front. Yep. Derek, I, I will be happy if we do not give away any stupid goals, if it's not down, down to us. If we're beaten fair and square and they, you know, have some incredible attacking moves that, you, you know, and they, 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 they rip us apart and and stuff like that, you can, I'll not say be, be uh, content about it, but it's certainly, you know, when it's our own fault that we're getting beat. That's the most frustrating thing for us. I just I keep saying it. I just hope we turn up, Derek. That's 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 what I'm looking for. If we turn up, we'll have a chance, and then it's in the lap of the gods after that. And of course, the referee's going to be Willie Collum as well. So, depending what mood Willie Collum's in, whether he makes it all, all about him or as uh, uh, there is some actual put proper re- refereeing decisions there. I just don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We might as well have Willie Wanker and and being a referee. So, but anyway, all that's left to say is thanks for listening and goodbye. Take care, folks. Bye bye. And the stadium erupts in red, white, and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go.